Assalamu alaikum. Sadi, can you please tell us about Sayyidina Hazaz? Hmm. Sayyidina Hazaz is the Sultan of all the jinn, of all the mu'min jinn and the jinn worlds have sultanates and kingdoms. Sayyidina Hazaz is, is the Sultan over all of them. So alhamdulillah that uh, we're asking for their support and that these are the, the great protectors and and the blessings for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad as Izzatullah, Izzat Rasul, Izzat al Mu'mineen. So, anybody with a kindergarten brain keeps asking, I thought Allah only protects. Quran al Majid is describing for us that by the power of Allah, by the power of Sayyidina Muhammad and by the power of the Mu'mineen. So they have Allah's power, they have Prophet's power and as a result they have an immense amount of power. So we ask that they always be with us and that they keep within our associations, that their nazar be upon us, their intercession be upon us. They're like the physical guides or human guides, they are the spiritual guides. Asking that they support our association, our homes and our communities, inshaAllah is a very significant sort of authority. We pray that Allah grant us an understanding inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi As Salaam Sayyidi, in meditation the heart feels squeezing sensation. This also feels during public gatherings. What is the reality of this squeezing? Well, the thing we described before there's contraction and expansion. So just like the, the womb, just like the earth with earthquakes that Allah describes in Surah Zalzalah that when it shakes and begins to open what's within her will be revealed and the earth being of a feminine pronoun because of the importance that within her is going to reveal a reality. And that the, the quaking of the heart similar, that there's jalali, majestic tajali and that crushes. And Allah crushes everything incorrect with a jalali, majestic energy. And as a result of the crushing then Allah will expand. So there's a maqam, the crushing crushes and lifts the servant. Once they've been lifted then there's a plateau in which a jamali which is a beatific emanation and then that's a more euphoric. So Jalali is then the shaykhs are dressing with like a fire and an energy, they heat up and the energy comes and begins to crush everyone and crush the hearts and crush everything. And that, that's a significant importance in the crushing because then Allah will raise and then an expansion. So this is a system in which to, to crush and to raise, crush and to raise. So the heart then is the vehicle for that energy and the recipient of that energy inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Would you please tell us which zikr can we welcome the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi ya sahib al-waqt. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi ya sahib al-waqt. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi ya sahib al-umzur. So these salawats that are salawat upon Prophet and there's a reality upon all the Muhammadiyoon that they take a Muhammadan dress and Allah has provided their Muhammadan name to be under that salawat. So when we say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi, it's a salawat upon Allah upon Sayyidina Muhammad and his Muhammadiyoon that from the light of Prophet takes and then dresses upon their Muhammadiyoon. This is a 
a praise upon the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi. They say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi, ya sahib al-waq, sahib al-unzur, unzur hadana wa ishfalana wa abiduna bi madadakum. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi, ya sahib al-waq, ya sahib al-unzur. InshaAllah. And asking for his madad, asking for the seven wazirs and their madad, Shamat al Fardani, Abdul Rauf al Yamani, Yusuf al Siddiq, Imam al Arifin, Nisan al Mutaqalimeen, Arif Tayyad Maruf ibn Murhan, Burhan al Karamna, Qawth al Anam, Sahib al Waqt Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam, Ya Sayyidina Hazaz al Dirikna. So it means asking these Rijan Allah whom are holding the power on this earth for the events that are coming. Said before that Allah taught people in Lord of Power, Lord of Rings, that the human are very frail if they think that they're going to be able to do anything. So that Allah didn't leave this nation alone, means that the, the great power of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad is in the jinn nations and their support and their allegiance to Sayyidina Mahdi. So their sultanat and their bayat is through their life, they don't alter in their bayat or they cease to exist. This was their covenant with Allah They don't interfere in human life, they don't respond to any human interaction. They, their, their allegiance is to Allah to Sayyidina Muhammad and to Sayyidina Mahdi So these are a great support for the nation just by their name. It brings a tranquility into the home and brings a, a fear to shayateen and nefarious beings that, that will witness a light and witness a reality just by the mentioning of these names they run in fear, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Peer Sahib Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, Sayyidi what is the importance of the number nine and eleven? There are nine awliya who are there. Forgive my ignorance. There are nine awliya who are where? Just there are nine awliya who are there. There are the nine that control the circle of perfection, and these are great awliya within Naqshbandiya, Sultan and awliyas that their dress was Sultan of Dhikr, that they have been given a secret by Allah that they inhale and exhale all the realities of Holy Qur'an. Some did a couple times in their life achieve that. By the end Shaykh Abdul Faiz Dagestani was breathing, inhaling and exhaling with every breath that reality. And that secret from Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani. So then we have an article on Nur Muhammad understanding the becoming a star or secrets of letters and numbers where there's a circle of nine shaykhs, no faces, no names because those are that's not important to know the name but to know the shaykh that will allow you into that circle is Shaykh Nansam Sultan al-Awliya Muna Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani. And that they play a role of allowing the student into that circle when they've perfected, they've dressed with their character, they made their connection with the muraqaba to turn them into a star, a najm. And that there is a light from the light of Prophet that described that, follow any of my companions they are like a star on a dark night. So that that student enters into that circle and then we've described in other talks and you can google on the, the website or search on the engine of Nur Muhammad the talk about each position and each shaykhs. Shaykh of position one is going to teach about the reality of tawheed and then throughout their life will begin to inspire them about real tawheed and the reality of one, the reality of ahad, the realities of Allah's oceans of realities. And then the shaykh at number two is then teaching about Bahr Qudra and the ocean of power that what's the significance of two is two is actually the reflection of one because we have just the line with the line and that that two is a reflection of one and that that reflection is the ocean of power and then keeps going all the way around 
And this was the reality of the Enneagram that was taught by Sultanul Awliya and Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani. And that, that reality is not self-help, it's not the nine mental states that people can be aware of and then they try to fix themselves and offset one mental state with another mental state. That's not a, at all what was taught. The nine has to do with coming into the tariqahs, submitting to the tariqah and that the shaykh train the student to enter into the association that is headed by Sultanul Awliya Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani. And through their spiritual connection, spiritual training, then they'll be taught on how to enter into that association if Shaykh Nazim wants to take them into that reality. And then these nine shaykhs will begin to dress their soul eternally and it doesn't stop. Continuous is information and knowledges that are coming to their reality about these. And that's why Shams al Arifin is about their teachings. That's why nobody's talking about it because they don't know about it. The Shams al Arifin is from the teachings of these nine and the gateway that's hidden in the Qur'an from Surah 9, Surah 18, Surah 27, 36, all the nines all the way up to Surah 108 which is Surah Kautha. So these are the Kauthari realities. A servant that is moving in Shams al Arifin is moving to the Kauthar to be dressed by the fountain of life, the fountain of eternity. As a result they become who men, that they're dressed from Allah's hidayat and guidance and that they have the wow of eternal love and they represent Allah's eternal love upon this earth and upon the heavens and, and universes because they achieved an eternal state. That's just the, the physical but what their soul is in charge of and what their soul is responsible of then only Allah knows, inshaAllah. Uh, dear Sayyidi, uh, we, have the, um, we have your blessed books, uh, which order should we read them in? Timeless Reality, Levels of the Heart, uh, Ihsan al-Kamil, Rising Sun of the West, Pursuit of Angelic Power. Yes, the timeless reality so that you understand all the basics of the meditation, you make the meditation, make the connection. With the connection then you probably will understand the angelic power more, angelic energies more and then you read more about the levels of the heart and how to understand the heart, to open the heart and if that heart opens then Surah Yaseen which is the heart of uh, Divinely Present, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's all about the secrets of that heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And the verses within Surah Yaseen are its eternal dress upon the soul of Allah. Uh, Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah in meditation, if you feel a vibration in between your eyes, do you think this is bad? No. Don't, don't worry about anything that you feel, don't pay attention to what you feel. Just keep your connection and keep moving with your connection. That if you're visualizing the shaykh, visualize the shaykh and begin to drown out everything. So before in meditation train yourself to meditate through a busy place eventually. Means that when you come for meditating in the zikr and it's not going to be quiet, it's not going to be perfect but life is never going to be like that. So you train yourself in an ability to always connect no matter what the circumstances, how busy the circumstances, how noisy the circumstances because it's never going to be perfect. You can train a little bit when it's very, very quiet but once you have the understanding then you should test yourself when it's a little bit noisier and, and, and kid, kids or children are making a lot of noise and you're still able to connect with your heart and focus and then once you keep that focus, don't care about pain, don't care about something scratching you, these are all distractions. And as you become more subtle then of course you're going to feel 
more scratching, more itching, more things trying to crawl on you. And that's all the test, not to concentrate on that, concentrate on the connection, connection, connection until it becomes stronger and stronger inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ya Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi so if we feel like stuck in a time loop, what to do to mentally overcome this confusion? What type of time loop? It's not, it's not clear for me but you can email help me at nurmuhammad.com. If you feel that you're not progressing then that's something different. You just have to keep doing it, you have to keep supporting, you have to use all of the elements. You can't leave one element out. A lot of people may meditate and not support but then they're not getting the nazar so it's just meditation on your one side. So you support and that support means you're getting the attention of the tariqah and if you can support with whatever Allah has given to you or from your time and your efforts and your ability and we've described that many times because you want your good actions to show who you are. Not that you just sit and you want to connect but you want them to have their eye out, their spiritual eye continuously upon the servant. Not because you emailed and say, keep your nazar upon me, that's like the cheating way, that's not gonna really do anything. But that you support, you're contributing, you're participating. As a result of your participation that's what we describe is your social index, what's your social index points with them? They see your name on these social platforms, they see that you're sharing, that you're doing your khidmat and then when you sit to do your meditation your hisab has something with you. And that's the same way with Allah it's no different. Allah wants you to have good actions and good deeds so that when you pray you have something in your hisab to offer for that prayer. If the person has nothing in their account and they're praying then that's something different. So that's why then people may feel, oh I'm not, nothing growing but if you're using all of the tools that they're explaining and your name is all over the place, they see the name, they see the participation, they see the activity, they see the sharing, they see the comments. So alhamdulillah of course then now you're, you've got their attention and that's all that's necessary in a world that's so busy you have to try to get their attention. And this is the shaykh telling the students, but look at the shaykh, he's, he's why you come back and say that, why are you always so busy? Why you have to do this? You don't have to do that, you can just sit at home. So no, because we're not going to have the attention of Prophet we're just sitting and doing nothing. So it's, it's to get Prophet attention that we keep telling people, go out and give some food, let's do like this, let's have this event, let's make this video, let's put these things out. So that we have to continuously buy under the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad as a result of our productivity we're able to come to Prophet and not ask for a cup and not ask for a spoonful of blessings but we ask that please send us oceans and rivers of blessings that can go into every video, every book, every audience, every production, everything that we're doing. And that's why Qasida Buddha is describing some come and get a, a cup, some get a handful and some take oceans from the reality of Prophet So our shaykhs taught us, if you want the ocean then you better do something to, to deserve that. He doesn't give an ocean on a shaykh that's sitting at home, just here, here's an ocean for you. What is he going to do with the ocean? He's just doing nothing, he's not, not teaching anything, not not putting out broadcasts, not trying to improve the lives of people. So with the same system the shaykh is asking from himself, he's asking from others to get their attention, do something, get up and make yourself to be known. Not known by posting sobats and making yourself a fake shaykh but taking the shaykh's sobats and posting them, taking the articles, posting them, taking all of these services and, and participating, distributing food. So all of this is the system to, to be under the nazar inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can we support if we are not uh, near USA? I want to support from Bahrain, what is the best method? Well the websites they support, they're not based on the US, the website has, has people from around the world.
the PayPal is not uh, restricted to only one country. So that where our services are available worldwide. Our audiences are from Pakistan, from India with cryptocurrencies, with with the all over Russia, Ukraine, Czechoslovakia, all over Europe, France, Germany. All the people who are logging on to the YouTube, that's why we say, oh how's everybody, where's everybody from? You'll see all the logins that come in from all over the world and all of them use the PayPal accounts, the donation accounts, they can go to the shop and buy items from the shop. If they're in a restrictive country like India, Pakistan, they use crypto. So however people want to, there's always a way inshaAllah. Walaykum as what will be the best way to keep learning or supporting these realities when there's no access to internet? Oh, they have no access to internet or you're talking about when, when it goes down? When it goes down probably. Yeah, when it goes down then you know, we're, we are where we are at that time. Whoever's got it, got it, they got the books, alhamdulillah, they start to read it. If there's some other form of communication that is available at that time, they said that Elon Musk may have a, a satellite net, Skynet, when when the physical earth systems go down or oh Allah knows what Allah has in store and what He's written. But our life is always a preparation for days of difficulty. Just like if there's no food what are you going to do? Uh, stockpile some food, make sure that you have supplies, that you have things that don't go bad, canned goods and that you have some basic necessities and foods that have been put aside. If your life is relying on a grocery store, the, their supplies are only three days. And a lot of grocery stores now even in the west, they don't really have their grocery store fully stocked anymore. So something's happening with their supply chains. So these are signs, Allah's rahmah that it's actually coming slow. You go and there's no cars available, there's no items on the shelf, it's, oh yeah, China's not giving them. So we see it, we see the signs. So, you know, everybody put a little bit of extra food in their cupboards and canned goods in the, their, their cupboards and then they eat it and then put a new one, eat it and put a new one. So when it does go like a hot potato or sit on the musical chairs, when it does go off at least you have your cupboard filled with food. You eat from what you have and then you buy and replenish that supply. So when that diet does come and the lights and power go off, then at least you have your supplies, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as uh, Does the dua on the food take away, for example, the character of animal? The, the bad character of the animal? Of yeah, inshaAllah the dua on the food and Nashbandi dua is asking from Prophet and all the awliya and mentioning the awliya's names that their nazar be upon what I'm about to eat, they bless it and bless the energy of it so that it change it from wild energies to beatific energies inshaAllah. But either way too much chicken make people too picky, 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 picky and you see the characteristics, they eat too much chicken. And they're picky on everything, pick on this, pick on this, they're, they're, they're sensitive and comment on everything. That's what's meant by that characteristic. And then goats where it's, it's popular, my goodness can you imagine the character of the goat? It jumps around on everything. When you see them at a farm, we used to live in a farm in the east coast and the goat was just notorious. He had that that goatee and he jumps on everything, he jumps on the sheep, he's, he's bouncing on top of cars, he's all over the place. So then also then that character can be a little bit wild and, and, and jumpy. And they say that the, the lamb is, is uh, most peaceful, that it submits halal to be halal and is very calm. So it probably brings more aramesh, more sort of softness into the heart. So we are what we eat. Most likely you can see those characters in the children because they're, they're, they're innocent. You feed them a lot of one and then you see them bouncing around, jumping, jumping, jumping. Then you say, oh okay now I understood, less goat meat <laughs> or less. Unless you want children to jump like goats then, then that's probably good, no problem. Walaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So why someone feels drained or tired after attending a majlis? For example, 
I have felt this way after attending a gathering and actively participating in its zikr and meditation. Yeah, I uh, don't know which majlis you're making reference to but if it's a, a group that, that doesn't have an energy and you have an energy then the majlis can be just sort of draining on people because the energy is going to go to the most positive source. So if uh, five people coming with a, a negative energy or, or less positive energy and there's one with a very positive energy then what happens is the energy goes to the positive energy. But if it's these associations that are with the ijazah, with permission and they do the madad then the zikr and the, the association should be lifted all the negative energy to the presence of the shaykhs and that the shaykhs take that negativity and lift it up. So that's one is the understanding of energy and the flow of energy and two that there can be a, an immense amount of energy and by the time you leave you actually feel burned. That's a different, completely different thing in energy that the shaykh can be releasing a tremendous amount of energy and people feel like their circuits are fried and, and that's a jalali because a immense jalali tajalli comes out and begin to cook and break them down and break down all the bad character, put their nafs on fire. And as a result they may get in the car and start to get angry at everything because it was a tremendous heat upon their nafs and the ego. And these associations they're like a fire on the ego. So many, many different things happen with it, the, the association. But if you go somewhere like a masjid and you come away with headaches and, and, and difficulties because maybe then there's no practices of light there and you end up carrying the burdens of, of fellow Muslims. So that, that's again a different understanding because if they're not doing any practices then definitely you're carrying the, the difficulties of, of these uh, locations. But shower, wash, do your zikr inshaAllah Allah Azza wa replenish. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum is it okay to learn about the zodiac signs for understanding of personality? I apologize if it's not okay. No problem, I don't think it, 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 it uh, don't know if it would help regarding personalities. That zodiac in, in far as Islam then you'd read from Sayyidina Ibn Arabi of the Sallallahu Siru about the importance of the buruj and the signs. And those are very difficult understandings and very difficult texts to, to enter into. But again if we have 20 curriculums to teach you and you find your cleverness to find the 21st curriculum, okay but I would recommend to stick with the curriculums we've given like master the meditation. If you've sat down and mastered the meditation, made all the connections, did everything that was necessary on our curriculum, that's why they, they teach that, you know, be loyal to the teacher, don't bounce around because you won't complete our curriculum. Say, I listened to this shaykh, I listened to that shaykh, I did this, I, I watched this YouTube. You're taking so many courses but in the end you'll find that you really didn't complete this course. So there's immense amounts of knowledge. If you go to know Muhammad they can teach you on the huruf, they can teach you on the lataif of the qab, they can teach you on the muraqabah. So which one of those has the student mastered before now I want to go into buruj and I want to understand the, the stars and other people's personalities but I haven't mastered my own personality. That's what's important is lay the foundation there's not much time left. So all these other things can be a distraction, lay your foundation. Means you connect, you feel the energy, you're, you're strong in the connection, you begin to witness the shaykh with the eyes of the heart, you feel the fires is coming, you feel the lights are coming, you feel the energies are coming, you're listening to all the talk so that when you're connecting you can almost hear the, the voice of the shaykh because you know how he talks. So you have to reach those states. Then when he's talking and you're connecting, you're feeling and you're understanding more than what he's saying because you're receiving the knowledges 
and the realities within your heart. And then the zikr same, you made your connection so strong so that when you're sitting in the zikr you're in the tajalli and the dress of the shaykh and you begin to ignite and light up. So all of these have to be mastered before we, we go to you know infinite other teachings and, and different communities and, and uh, yeah. And most of it is, is, is made up and, and most of it about personality disorders and, and we don't need to worry about that right now. We need to worry about basically making our connection with the heavens and receiving that light and that tajalli inshaAllah for protection, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Forgive my ignorance but should we listen to the zikr while we drive to work? Is it okay? Sure if you'd like to, there's no problem with that. You are, we listen to salawats, we listen to Qur'an, you can listen to zikr, no problem. Car and your car can be like a maqam for you, it's a, it's a time of peace and and you have your tasbih, you're doing your salawats, you're, you're making your connection, keeping your eyes on the road. <laughs> and many people have very beatific feeling when they enter their car because it's just cut off from everything and they're just listening to, to their salawats and to their programs. So alhamdulillah they listen to talks, especially people sitting in a car for an hour, you don't want to waste that hour. But not to do closing eyes and doing your tasbih and then getting into accidents God forbid so. I've seen people with tasbih in their hand driving and then you can't react to a, a sudden move and a car is dangerous. But if you can just listen to something and feel the energy of it and feel the presence of it, so alhamdulillah. Mm. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah mm. Is it better to connect while the who zikr is watched live or is it better to have a separate sitting for it because we don't seem to be progressing? Connect while the who zikr is live. Yeah, you connect at any time, but you you mean you want to make your main connection during the actual zikr, or you have to sit when you're by yourself. You know, between Asr and Maghrib are important times, or after Salatul Isha, you sit, you make your connection, you you spend time making your connection, so that when you do do the zikr, you're doing the zikr connected. But if your only time to connect is only at the zikr time where there's talks happening, there's sounds going on that's not going to be very sort of ideal for trying to make your connection during the zikr. You make the connection when you're at home sitting by yourself, breathing, visualizing like everything's been described. That's again from the timeless reality, when to do it, how to do it, all of that, inshaAllah. Subhanahu rabbi yasifoon. As salaamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ila sharaf al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sahbihi kiram. Wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyyatul aliyya wa sadatina wa sadaqeena al-Fatiha. <laughs>